let me go back to the front here and see what we're going to get done today. In the last part, I did the front beam, and you can see there's places that I missed, um, so I'll just touch that up. But the front beam area is all done. Not only that, but um, all the peripherals around that, like for example, the uh, some of the put the 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 things that we removed, um, not the steering link arm. We put that back on so we can, you know, steer it in back in the garage and stuff. But like the brake parts, the calipers, the uh, proportioning valve, the booster, the master, you know, the master cylinder, all that stuff, um, you know, all that is get got cleaned up and, and painted. You know, the brake push rod um, and the uh, what else did I do? The, like the, all the, you know, the steering stuff. All that's gonna be clean and painted. That's not necessarily poor 15. I'm just using a black. Uh, some primer in a automotive black paint. So um, I'm going to continue with that, but I'm going to go. I got to go backwards and start where I wanted to. Start forward. So we're here at the bumper. I'm going to or the the underneath the bumper. So I'm going to pour. Start by prepping all this, um, pour 15ing it. All this under here. This has already been blasted. It just has some flash rust on it, and then. I'm going to take the the steering drag link off and clean and paint that. It's pretty much ready to go. It's just all flash rusted, but it's been sandblasted. So I just need to clean it up, prep it, and paint it. And then just pour 15 all this area, uh, as well as maybe the steering box. You know, I'll probably have to remove that because it's got a lot of dust on it from the sandblasting. So I'll remove that, clean that up, and paint it as well. If you're not familiar with this unit, they sell this at Harbor Freight. It's, I forget how much it costs, but basically it's just a vibrating tumbler. You pour, I think, if I remember right, I put some of the ZEP in it, this degreaser. Um, I don't know, you put whatever solution you want in there, degreaser, you put maybe a little diesel in there, maybe some brake parts cleaner, whatever works. And then you just put, these, you buy this again from Harbor Freight, the Tumbler Media, and it's just these little, these little green plastic, sharp plastic things, and um, and just it just vibrates, and you let this go. You put your parts in here, let this go for about four or five hours, and you know they, let's see if I, you know it's just kind of does things for you while you work. This, there's one of the bolts for the uh, steering pump, like new. So, eh, you know, base, it's better than sitting there and sandblasting or, you know, or working on, on little stuff. Um, you just throw them in there, turn it on, four hours later, Parts look good, so a little time saver there.
two coats of paint. I'm not normally very anal retentive, but when it comes to restoring stuff, it's got to be shiny and black if it's going to be on the underside of the car. even though I purchased this to be able to thin it out and spray it uh, there's two reasons why I'm not going to ever spray this Pour 15. One is I was reading some online forums and they just said how toxic this stuff is. The reason they don't make, probably don't make it in a rattle can is because of how toxic it is and, um, and if it gets in your lungs it's a bad deal. And so then some people were asking, okay, um, you know, but they do make it, make the thinner for it, so you must be, you know, they, you can spray it. And they, yeah, you can spray it, but I would put on a full suit and, you know, mask with a filter, you know, all this stuff, and I don't have a full painting suit, you know what I mean, like where you have an air supply and all that stuff, so... Um, I, I just feel like if, you know, if, if I was to put it in my sprayer without that type of equipment, I could damage my lungs permanently. So I'm just going to go with brushing. And the, the second reason is, is, because, is now, I, I'm realizing now that I can only prep and clean small areas at a time anyway. I'm just not going to have time to just get the whole butt undercarriage of the bus done. So, um, so it's going to be brushed on from now on. And I'm going to be careful to... Um, save don't you know don't dip into the can and to save it this new can here has these metal clips on it like they, they really don't want you in getting into this thing it's unbelievable not only that but unlike most paint cans where you can just take a paint can key like you just can't do that with pour 15 like it the lip on this thing is unreal so which makes it really hard to um, open, but it also makes it to where you can't just open and reseal the can a few different times. You're basically, last time the can I had, I was able to seal it back once, and then the third time it just completely failed. So um, that's why I'm going to pour some of it in here for storage with a lid. Um, not all of it, but some of it, and then I'm going to put some in this this disposable thing just to uh, use it right now and hopefully I won't waste any of it I mean I only waste a little bit of it from the last can only a little bit kind of got hard I mean geez you just about have to ruin this thing to get the get it get it open anyhow I'm not gonna film this um, get this open and I'll start painting the underside and I'll check back later This makes me happy. Oh gosh, it took forever. Probably missed some spots. I'll have to touch up later. But it's cleaned up. Even got a little on the uh, bumper here. Let's see if I can get a better shot here. The sun is so bright. Anyway, that's what I want to see. I want to see black, shiny black.
open this up and get it on over there. Yeah, you can see that it is probably... Well, no, I don't know if I need to go back any further this way. But what I had to do on the other side is these things don't fit very well. Um, the notch has to get over... It has to get over this part here. Um, so what I had to do is beat, beat it. See that? Beat and reshape this thing. And then, where are my channel locks? I'm missing the most critical tool here. So the critical tool is a big pair of channel locks. And uh, I was able to get it. Now, these, the slide here, see how it has a tab on that one side? It's going to go in um, tab first from the front, front to back, because that's the widest. It's going to go in like that. And it's going to line up like that, and then you're going to push the tab, uh, push the tab in here. So the way I was able to do it on the other side, is I grabbed this and then squeezed it as best as I could. At the same time, dollied up, you know, each side of it because it's, it's, you know, if yours isn't rusty, probably use the old one. Otherwise, you'll be hammering and dolling a new one, which is fine. I obviously had to cut mine off. They were so rusted, so obviously I have to replace them. So then what I'm going to do is get these pliers as close, close kind of close to the, the side that I'm going to put it on. And then just kind of pry it shut and at the same time work back and forth on it until it still needs to be... I think it's probably this other side. Yeah, this other side is not over though. Yeah. Okay, it's not easy to film this and work at the same time, but basically I just, you know, again, just grabbing with the pliers, squeezing and just dolling all around this, especially on the back side here. This is not. This is just, this one's harder than the other side. Oh, what a mess. Okay. We got it. Now I got to do is take this something like this and you get it all the way seated and just yeah, I'll have to get up underneath the car but you get the idea I'm going to bend this tab up and that will hold it from pushing back out. And that's the sway bar. Ugh. Well, I wanted to get more done this weekend, but the weather and various other activities uh, took over. So the uh, steering's back in. I need to fish out and figure out where that horn wire is, but I can do that while the steering is installed here. Uh, so the steering box is back in, and uh, the drag link is back in. As you see, everything's painted black. You can hopefully. So I got all that done, and uh, what else? Oh, I got the 
Well, obviously the drag or the uh, sway bar is finished and installed. And the, well, let's see, you can't probably see it from here, but the, the uh, brand new steering damper. Shot from the other. Yeah, the steering damper new is installed, and I'll probably I've still got to clean up and paint the uh, bottoms of the tie rods and some areas that I missed. But okay, so I think I got the horn situation figured out. I've got um, a uh, continuity my meter on continuity, and I got one lead on just on the strap here that's going to be bolted to the coupling, the steering coupling. And then the next lead is hooked up right here to the wire that goes to the horn. Um, so now I'm getting pretty good. You can hear it beep, the continuity. Uh, it wasn't doing very well before. I was having a mash on it. I occasionally get beeps. I had to take this ring off by taking these three screws out. There's these little springs underneath the screws. And I basically just used a, you know, some electronics contact cleaner and just a you know scotch bright pad and just clean all in there there's like a little looks like a little brass kind of surround in there so what happens is this wire comes up and attaches this this ring and it looks like an aluminum ring or something and then these bolts have plastic through them so everything is isolated and then as soon as you push it down into there it makes it touches the in, that inside ring of the steering wheel, which then is grounded all the way through to the bottom. So before I put all this back together, I want to make sure this is working good. And then the other thing I forgot was on the when I installed the coupling, I forgot to include the ground wire. So there's a Obviously, the horn is grounded to here, but the coupling, it doesn't, the, the, the coupling makes it to where it's not metal to metal. The metal um, from the steering box and the metal from the coupling stay, you know, perpendicular and they're isolated on that rubber. So what you do, or what I had was, I can't find it, but it broke basically. It was a piece of wire and it had a, um, uh, a ring terminal on it. It was on this side, and then it just kind of wraps under, uh, down and around there, and then bolts on to the underside of that, and that wire makes the uh, continuity between the steering column and the steering box, which then will give the horn its ground. So I'm going to go ahead and I uh, found this like scrap piece of brown wire and a couple rings. Where's the camera? Probably this size is probably decent, so I'm going to just crimp this together, and then I'm going to bolt it bolt that all together and then the horn, the steering box, and everything should be uh, good to go. Okay, I think I got it now. I've got the, um, there's a short piece of wire wrapped real tight uh, with a ring terminal on, the, on here and then it wraps around and then it mounts the bottom of this one. You can see it, this one right here, which, go, which goes to the steering box. So now I've got this lead right here, this red, um, testing continuity. This time I have it going through the firewall and just clipped onto the actual steering box to test that ground. So now I'm going to hit the, the um, horn and see if it's con continuous. You hear that beep? So now we know we have a continuous ground that's actuated from the horn button. And, and, uh, and completes the ground down all the way down to the steering column. Well, that's it for part four. Sorry it was a little bit of chaotic, but uh, it's a bunch of different kind of random clips from work I've been doing over the past couple weeks. But going forward, we'll continue on more rust remediation, welding in replacement panels, and mechanical work like brakes and shocks and all that type of stuff. You know, again, starting in the front and then we'll eventually move to the rear. So that's the restoration video series that we'll continue on. But in parallel with that, very soon, I'm gonna be launching a next set of videos, which will be focused on the electrical conversion 
starting with the battery design and even I'll build one of uh, one of the battery modules one of probably 40 battery modules that'll go into this bus and I'll show you how I do it and what I purchased and, and all that stuff go into the theory of that and so that'll be exciting and that'll be starting that next uh, set of videos in parallel with the restoration that are focused on that electrical conversion so I hope you enjoy this and like share and subscribe the videos and I look forward to doing the next one. Thanks for watching.